So I um, shot the rest of the video uh, first, and now I'm kind of coming back and realizing that there were some things I overlooked, and I just wanted to kind of offer these as uh, an introduction. I realized when I uh, did the uh, second part of the video that I said there were four or uh, two main issues rather with the with the barbells, namely one that they wouldn't spin spin due to lack of lubrication, and two um, the bar being bent. That's actually not true. There's actually two others that I uh, forgot at that time, and those are um, that the weights um, won't come off the uh, barbell and or you will have trouble getting them on uh, the barbell and generally that has to do with a problem with these uh, caps that you see later on in the video and if we have that problem generally we'll just take a grinder um, I've generally used a bench grinder but um, I imagine you could use just the grinder that's with a different type of wheel um, later in this video and you just kind of figure out where the high spot is where the friction is and you just take a little bit of metal off um, and generally, in fact, that one, I don't know, that one that's kind of a little bit discolored right there might be one that was ground down a little bit um, because of that exact problem. If you see, that one's shiny and nice relatively, and then that one's a little bit, that one I believe we had to ground down. So that's, that's another problem that you might run into. Um, and the other thing is, and this is a little bit stranger, is a sleeve coming loose um, in the barbell. So in this section of the barbell heel that you'll see later in the video, you'll see me take it off in, I don't know if it's some of them or all of them, these York barbells, but there's a, a metal sleeve that is positioned somewhere. And I'm not sure if it's, you know, in, if it's, you know, measured and they weld it in the center or if it's, you know, towards one end, I'm actually going to try and figure that out. But sometimes that sleeve comes loose. And what will happen is, is you have a barbell end. This is a barbell uh, end. You will have a barbell end where you'll hear this. All right, now obviously at that point, you've got a fairly significant amount of weight shifting around in there. That barbell at that point pretty much can't be used. Um, now, I think there might actually be a fix for that, but it involves what I understand to be a fairly expensive welder. Um, and I might figure that out someday, but given the amount of time that that's gonna take, uh, and the expense of these barbells, I wouldn't, uh, that's probably not going to be something that most people want to do. I might do it just to kind of figure out if I can do it, if I end up getting that piece of uh, welding equipment. I don't think a regular, like normal, you know, cheap MIG welder would work. I think you're going to have to use like a special kind with like a, a long extension to kind of get down in there to be able to do it. So anyway, but I'm not a welding expert. Maybe someone could figure it out. But again, these bars aren't that expensive. So doing that type of work probably... Um, won't be worth it. The other thing I wanted to mention was the barbells I'm talking about, I believe the barbells that we've used are the um, international bars, the York international bars, and they have a 150,000 tensile strength and they have four bearings in them, two on each side. Now, a lot of the other, if you get on York's website today, you'll see a lot of them have, You'll first of all, you'll see they have a sleeve bearing option. I don't recommend that because the sleeve bearings we have had terrible luck with anything that has a sleeve bearing. Um, but they also, um, York has more expensive bars that are eight bearings and 190,000 uh, tensile strength. Um, and obviously those were, are going to be more expensive, but it's going to be a better bar. And probably, you know, you might not have the bending issues that I was, uh, that I'm showing, that I will show later in the video on that. Um, the uh, last thing I wanted to mention, which is something I actually just noticed is, if you look at these two barbells, now we've bought barbells at various times over the last two years. If you look at these two barbell ends here, the top two uh, in your screen, I'll kind of just get into those. So if you look at those two, you'll notice that they're not the same length. Those are both, uh, you know, 45 pound, you know, what's typically uh, referred to as men's bars. Those are men's bars, but one is shorter. Uh, um, than the other, and they uh, are actually they're the same um, they're the same length, but the amount of area you have to put weight on is probably about you know an inch inch and a half shorter. So which is something I just noticed. So if you're pulling these bars apart and you've got a mixed bag and you're using parts, you might want to keep that in mind. I, I realized that when I was going to 
um, piece together a bar and I was like, wait a minute, this isn't the same size. So I didn't realize that was the case. I don't know if we bought two different kinds. I don't think so. I think we've always generally bought the cheapest uh, bearing type that you can buy, which is the one with the uh, historically has had four bearings. Um, and I believe it's called the York International um, Bar. And we've had uh, relatively good luck with those. So, or very, actually, I would consider very good luck with those considering the, the pounding that those get. So sorry, this got a little long, but this is kind of an intro with some more background on some other issues you might see. Okay, uh, this video is about York barbells and some issues that you can have with them and hopefully how to remedy those issues. So this is a York uh, barbell. This is the standard plain Jane ball bearing ones or, or a needle pin bearing, I think they are, but they're, they're bearings, they're not sleeve bearings. Um, this is the main issue you're probably gonna see is these things don't don't really want to spin too much right now i'm putting torque on this to get it to turn even that one's pretty bad um this one over here get it in focus a little bit better you can see it spins that's not perfect doesn't sound great but it spins pretty well but you can get them to the point where they're completely locked up the other issue that you may see with these barbells and this isn't something that you can really do much about, but this is one that I've pulled completely apart. And you can just see when I roll it, you can just see it's bent. If it was not bent, it would not be making that sound. So once that happens, at that point, the bar is pretty much scrap. Um, I don't know, there may be people out there that say you can bend it back and get them right, but I don't know if that would be worth the effort. And it, my guess is it would be much more likely to just re-bend. At that point, I take the parts that I can salvage out of it to use on other barbells if I want to put some back together. And then I have a nice pry bar to use. So what you're looking at now is the cap on the end of the barbell. And there's what I will call a pin in there. Um, but it's not really like, it's more of just a shim slash pin. Um, you'll get a better picture of it uh, when I take it out. But what you're going to use is you're going to use a quarter inch um, bolt that's, you know, a little, like three or four inches long to just hammer that out. So I'll show you those tools here in a second. So these are the incredibly sophisticated tools that you use to knock the pin out. It's just, like I said, that's a four or five inch bolt, but it's a quarter inch, just big enough that you can get in to knock that pin out and then just a hammer. So here you can see kind of from the side, this isn't the best, but you can see the pin that I've kind of punched out a little bit there. And all, all I did literally was, you know, stick that bolt in the hole and just give it four or five good whacks, you know, to get the pin started. Now, if that thing's not moving at all or it's just really stuck, you know, you might have a problem where, um, you know, it, it might be a, you know, bigger problem. You may have to like drill it out or something like that. I have never had that happen. So, uh, I would just give it some good whacks. Once you see it kind of moving out the other side, you know, you know you're in good shape and then it should, you know, pop right out fairly easily. So this is what the, um, the end cap and the pin look like once they're off. You can see the end cap has a hole that goes through it. And that's just where the pin goes. And then you can see here's the end of the barbell. See, there's the whole barbell. That's the end of the barbell without the cap on it. You can see where the, uh, you know, pin went through there. Uh, just F FYI, if you end up driving that bolt all the way through to the um, part where it drives the pin, you know, clear out of the um, end cap there like I did, uh, the, the bolt may get a little stuck and you kind of got to jimmy it out. Not a big deal. If you just drive the pin out to the point where it's, in the cap but not in the bar anymore then you can generally get it off and it's a little bit easier to get back on it's not hard either way but it saves you a little time of jamming it all the way through 
Uh, the end cap again. Okay, so this is the bar, the, the end of the barbell. We've got the cap off. So we got the pin out. We've got the uh, cap off the end. This is the one that was barely turning. I mean, you can see I'm putting a good bit of force on that. It's loosening up a little bit as I turn it, but this is not uh, in good shape. But I can just, what I can do is just take this right off. So now that the cap's not on, you can see I just pop that right off and I can pull it out. And this, this is pretty much, this is pretty much one assembly here. All right, it's got bearings in both ends. Probably, I might be able to get a shot of those, but you can, you can actually, you can see them on this end there at the end. Um, yeah, you can see the bearings because they're right there. Um, well, if you've seen a bearing before, you know that that's kind of what it looks like. The other side, they're a little bit further in there. And I might have to get some light to see if I can see that. But what you're going to see is, this is kind of the interesting part. So this is where the bearing sits. All right. And you can see all that crud and nastiness. And that's really nothing, actually. If I grab my light over here, you can see that's not, that's not too bad. But then if you look down here... That is pretty disgusting. Uh, you can see there's rust, corrosion in there. I mean, these things get sweat on. They get chalk in there, and uh, they can look they can look pretty bad there. This is actually this is actually probably the worst one uh, I've ever seen. Um, and for a bearing bar to be that seized up, I'm not surprised that it's that bad. Okay, this is the other end where I couldn't show you uh, kind of what the bearing looked like. Um, but if you look down in there now, um, and you know, and you kind of have some instinct of what a bearing looks like, you can see uh, that bearing. It's got the little rollers. It looks like, you know, a p pinstripes kind of down in there. Those are the little rollers that sit in the bearing. Now, I've only got two hands here, but... My guess is that, I mean, judging by the dust and everything and the corrosion that's on that, that thing probably is barely spinning at this point. Um, so we're going to have to get some uh, solvent down in there, get that kind of cleaned out. Then we'll put some uh, lubricant on it. It should clean right up. Now, what I generally use to kind of get, you know, just to kind of get some pressure or some liquid in there to, you know, get the big gross stuff out, I generally use uh, brake cleaner because it basically evaporates um, very quickly and dries very quickly so I can kind of use it just to blow out whatever I need to get out of there. Um, that's what I use for a liquid. If you've got access to you know compressed air, um, you know definitely you can use that as well. Use some compressed air, put some liquid in there, put some you know more uh, compressed air as far as like if you've got an air compressor or even like the stuff you use on computers basically you just want to get as much of the uh you know whatever kind of residue or whatever is in there out um you know just getting the big chunks out of there is going to make a huge difference and then as you saw earlier there was a ton that was left on the bar we'll go back we'll get that off we'll get what we can out of there we'll get that off we'll put some lubricant on it it's going to make a world of difference so this is the other side, and you can see the other side of the uh, end of the barbell there, the, the, the thing the weight sits on, right? We're by the, co we're by the, um, you know, the end that sits towards the uh, middle. Uh, you can see that bearing sits right there. I mean, you have easy access to that bearing. Um, and you can see, I'm trying to get it in a little better focus for you. You can just see the crud and the residue that's there. I mean, clearly the thing, you know, started out with oil. It still has a little bit of oil, but that oil's just taken up a bunch of chalk. Uh, it's gross. Um, my guess is if I went down there and tried to spin it, it would pretty much uh, barely move. Let me see if I can, even without the light, kind of get an idea. Eh, it spins. It spins okay. Um, it's actually not as bad as the other side, which was basically completely dry. Um, but I mean, you can see, I mean, that's what, focus.
objectives. I don't know if you could see those metal flakes that are basically coming off onto my finger when I stuck it down in there. So basically what we're going to do, same thing, put some brake fluid in there, some solvent, maybe some compressed air if you got it. Blow out whatever you can. Um, use paper towels, rags, socks, whatever. Kind of move it around. Try to get all the particles off. The uh, try to get the particles off the uh, bearing there. And then um, once you're uh, too much zoom there. Once you're um, you know pretty confident that you got it in pretty good shape. Uh, you know, and it looks clean. I'll show you a picture of kind of what you know relatively clean looks like. Uh, then at that point we can lube it and put it back on the bar after we clean up the bar. Okay. Now you can see, uh, I just went in there a little bit of, uh, brake fluid to clean it out, uh, some old rags, get it in there. Um, and I could see, you know, bits of metal that probably came from the bar. I'll show you that in a second, just to get it, you know, just to get the old oil and stuff out of there and, uh, you know, clean it up a little bit. Um, you know, I, you could spend all day on this and you would still be getting, you know, you wouldn't have a clean rag or anything coming out of there. Um, you know, get to the 70, 80% solution where you feel like it's moving free. You're not seeing, you know, gross pieces of stuff. Uh, you know, and I think at that point, you know, you can stop. I mean, this bar worked for five, five and a half years, daily use, hard use. Um, you know, and it, it, you know, it worked fine, um, with stuff frankly, flaking off, you know, the coating of the bar in there. Um, so if you go back, you clean up the bar, like I'm going to show you, you put some good lubricant in there. You'll at least, I would be shocked if you didn't get two, three, you know, to five years, you know, out of a good, uh, you know, just quick thing like this. Okay. So I apologize for the quality here, but you can see this is the, um, Kind of zoom out here. This is the, you know, obviously the center of the barbell there. Apologize for that focus. There we go. That's the center of the barbell. And I'm just kind of tracking back to the end here where the, uh, you know, weights sit. So this is where the inside bearing sits. You can kind of see those ridges and it's, it's a little, there we go. That's good focus. Um, you can kind of see where the meta, those ridges are created. Basically what's happened is, is, over time, you know, they wore the coating off that bar. And when I was cleaning it up, you would see, you know, flakes of, you know, uh, basically chrome. And you can see those flakes, you know, right here. Those are flakes of chrome that have basically been worn off. And all those got into the bearing, you know, and seized it up. That's kind of how we ended up with this problem um, in the first place. So, um, and you can kind of see it. Same deal over here. Uh, you can kind of see it a little bit there. But you see in the middle, it's all just, you know, the chrome looks pretty much fine. There's a little bit of, you know, corrosion and stuff, but the chrome looks fine. The, the reason all the, you know, friction, all the friction occurs at the ends where the bearings sit. That's where all the work has taken place. So, but what we're going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to clean those up with a, just a, four, a cheap four inch grinder and some, um, you know, wire brush, get that all cleaned up. And then you can put those, um, you know, put those ends back on there and they should be good for, you know, some time, get them lubed up. So this is what we're going to use to get it cleaned up. This is a Harbor Freight four inch angle grinder. And then this is the seven piece grinder brush kit. All right, this is the, you know, this is the cheap stuff, guys. If you if you have tools, you know, obviously, you know, these this is not specific to the job. And if you feel like you're going to, you know, you're one of those, I want to buy the best type people, this is not, you know, this is not what you want to use. But for this simple task, you know, this thing is, a, you know, you can get it shipped to your door for $25, wait for a sale, sign up for their coupons or whatever. They're always offering free shipping or 20% off. You can get this stuff shipped to your door for $30 and for, you know, the task at hand, this will, you know, hold up well. It's not a, a particularly challenging task, but if you're out there, you know, 
grinding off rivets or, you know, doing a, something that really requires some horsepower, then you probably want to go ahead and buy something a little bit more powerful as far as the grinder. But for our purposes, you know, cheap, you know, the Harbor Freight grinder will work. All right. So I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this out of the box, assemble it, and then uh, show it to you guys and then we'll use it. Okay, guys. So this is what it looks like assembled. Um, this is the, you know, Harbor Freight grinder. This pin on the top is what you use to kind of lock the, the uh, assembly that spins. You can see there's a nut that uh, is on top of this wire brush thing that we have here. That's just a basic wire brush. You just use that pin, you lock it in place, and then you can get a, uh, I think it was a 7 8 wrench. It was a, yeah, I think it was a 7 8 wrench uh, onto that nut, and then you just tighten it down uh, as much as you can and to, you know, get it off obviously would be the reverse. Now I'll tell you these, you know, wire brushes here, these, this is the Harbor Freight wire brushes, you know, you're going to have some metal flying off. You're going to want to wear, you know, goggles. And if you can do this in a place outside, uh, do it in a place, you know, outside. What I used to do was disassemble the bar, put the bar up to a wire wheel, uh, you know, grinder, like this type of thing. Uh, I don't know, you can't see that. You can't really see it, but there's a wire wheel on there. Um, but I would use the grinder, but I think it will be, you know, easier for most people to uh, go ahead and use, you know, this type of thing. So I'm gonna try that on this one. I, I definitely don't, there's not gonna be any issue with getting that stuff off there. Um, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go ahead and wipe it down. Uh, you know, just use some brake fluid again, so just a, a light solvent just to wipe it down and get the crud off. Uh, and you guys can see what it looks like now. Uh, and then I'm going to run that, you know, just simple run that wire wheel over it uh, or run that uh, grinder over it and clean everything up. Now, you are going to end up taking off, you know, some of the chrome uh, and smoothing some of that out. Now, the thing is, is the chrome's already coming off. Um, so you, you probably don't want to spend your time stripping all of it. Um, you kind of want to get it smoothed out, get it to, a, you know, so that it looks okay. Um, I wouldn't, you know, remove all of it, but you know, you're definitely, you know, th this bar is not going to, you know, not going to last forever under hard, you know, gym use where it gets used every day, but removing that Chrome really isn't going to hurt anything. Um, sure, over the next couple of years, some of it's going to keep flaking off and eventually the bar might seize up again. But like I said, if you get another, you know, three to five years out of it, you know, by that time, who knows, somebody might load it up and bend it before then. So, so I, uh, I wanted you guys to see this. This is the sock I've been using to, uh, get in and clean those bearings. That's just one side. And then I just used it to wipe off the bar and I was actually surprised. You can see how much better um, that bar looks. This is the obviously the inside. You can see how much better that bar looks right there. And then this is the outside. See a little bit of corrosion. Let me grab the light here and see if I can get that to look a little better for you. So you can kind of see there's still, there's still some, um, you know, corrosion and stuff there, but it looks a lot better just getting that, just getting that oil off there. Honestly, I mean, if you were in, you know, a pinch and you weren't that worried about it, you could, you could probably put some oil on these bearings, put it back on there, you know, and this would be serviceable probably for a couple of years. I'm going to go ahead and run the grinder on, on it just lightly, try to get some of that surface rust off, especially the end here you know, where the cap goes and where that bearing was, that bearing was, you know, bone dry down there, no oil. Cause I think that corrosion is absorbing, you know, what little bit of lubricant was in there. So I'm going to go ahead and run it over there real quick and then I'll show you guys what the final result looks like. So I've uh, moved this bar over into the light a little bit more. So hopefully you guys can see it better, but this is the result. No kidding of just wiping it off, just wiping it off. And then, um, you know, just using that grinder for, you know, 30 seconds to a minute, just mainly hitting the ends. Um, you can see in the bar in the middle, you know, where the, between where the bearings sit, I mean, that's basically clean. All the chrome's there, 
you know, maybe some little bit of coming off, but the end there, it's a little bit rougher. You can hear it. And then there's where this front bearing seat sits, where I think most of the load goes. I don't know if they machine that in, if, if York machines that in, or if that's the result of the, um, you know, the bearing just over time wearing it out. But regardless, just with that wire brush and the little wipe off, it's a ton smoother. There's no stuff, there's no, uh, you know, grime coming off when I wipe it off now. And, um, you know, that between the, uh, you know, dirt we got out of the bearings and the dirt we got off the bar, we can now lube up those bearings, put it back on there, should be in pretty good shape. So, uh, the question becomes is what are we going to put, uh, on those, uh, roller bearings to, uh, before we put them back on the bar, we got them, you know, somewhat cleaned out. Like I said, 70, 80%, you know, cleaned out. You could spend all day and still have, you know, little nits of stuff coming out of there. Um, because it's, it's, there's not really a good way to, you know, pop them out and really, you know, soak them or anything like that. They're pretty much stuck in the bar and you, you might be able to pull the one out of the end. Um, but, or, or, you know, something like that, but that's a little bit beyond the scope of what we're doing. Probably not worth your time given the cost of these bars. Um, so this is what I've started using. Uh, I was originally using, um, uh, disc brake, uh, grease that they use for the, uh, wheel bearings. Uh, I got some of it over there. I'll, I'll pull some over and show you. But that stuff's a little thicker. I mean, it's designed for bearings that are, spe you know, spinning really, really quickly. You know, cars doing, you know, 60, 100 miles an hour or whatever. I mean, that's some heavy-duty stuff. Um, and, and what I was finding was, you know, it was fine. There was I wasn't getting any, um, you know, noise or anything like that. It was definitely lubricating and it was holding up. But I don't th feel like it, um, you know, it was a little bit too thick of a grease. So this is something I used on bikes when I was a kid. Uh, it, it works. I'm sure any sort of, you know, ball or roller bearing grease that is used on bicycles today, you know, would be comparable. I mean, I, I bought this like a year ago, so I know it's still out there. I just bought it because I knew it worked. There are probably, you know, different options out there for you to experiment, experiment with. But um, the point is, is don't use like a WD-40 or just like a little lubricant like that, because that's not going to stay in place. Um, and it's not going to, it's not going to hold up well. It'll probably work great, you know, for a little bit, but it probably won't hold up real um, well. I'm heading over. So this is, this is what I was using. And this, uh, honestly, I think I've had this, no kidding, you know, for 20 years. Um, but this is Castrol multi-purpose wheel bearing grease. Um, this is the stuff, you know, they put in uh, wheel bearings and cars, you know, like I said, that spin really quick. So, and you can see, I'll pull the lid off here. You can see, you know, that's a thicker grease as compared to, um, to well, you'll just have to take my word on it, but it's, it's a thicker grease than what you're going to see for like um, bicycles or something like that, which is a little bit more malleable because obviously it's not dealing with the uh, force and the loads. So this is what I'm going to put in there. I'm just going to put some on my finger, roll it around in there until I f you know, feel it's good. I'm probably going to put, put too much in or, you know, so that some, so that I, when I put it on the bar, some comes out and then I'm just going to have to wipe that off. No big deal. I'd rather have a little too much than too little and uh, go ahead and do that. Put it back on there and show you how it spins. Okay, so you can see now, this is the top. I'm not gonna show you the, the bottom bearing, but all I did was put grease on my finger, put it in there, you know, try to jam it in there, you know, on every little bit, and then spin it around, you know, a bunch. And, uh, you know, it's not it's not gonna, you know, spin freely. I mean, the grease is, uh, I mean, it'll, it'll, it'll spin for you and it should spin all the way around, but it's not gonna spin, you know, really, really, you know, freely or anything like that. I mean, it's in there. Once it gets worked in a little bit and it, it'll work better on the bar, but you know, don't, don't think it's going to be like, you know, the free wheel on a bicycle or anything like that. Um, on the other side, you got to have a little bit of a, a longer finger and it's got to be skinnier, skinny enough to get through the holes. So if you got a really short finger, I mean, you'd have to have a really short finger, but if you got a really short finger, a really fat finger, you might have tr trouble getting it in there. But on the other side, I'll show you here on the other side. The bearing is down past that ring, and you got to reach in. Maybe I can get it, the lighting just right. You can kind of see it there, but if you know what you're looking for. Um, 
but you got to basically reach in there and do the same thing. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So I'm going to slide it back on there. We'll spin it and see how it looks. So it's, all I did was, uh, slide it back on there. Uh, you can see I haven't put the, uh, I haven't put the cap back on. Uh, probably won't talk about that. It's basically just, you know, put the end back in, you know, use a hammer to drive the pin back in, use the same bolt that you were using to make sure that it's in far enough that the weight can go over the cap. Pretty straightforward. But you remember what it was before. I mean, I could barely turn it. Now I'm, you know, that's just the slightest bit of pressure and it spins easily. And the, and the main thing is, is there's not a lot of, you don't hear a lot of grind, grinding. You know, that's, it's, it, you can tell it's, it's, you know, metal on metal, but there's, you don't hear a lot of, you know, sand or dirt or anything in there. And then if you just kind of slide this off, you can see, let's see if I can get it focused there. You can kind of see where the bearing's sitting. Now there's a nice layer of grease there. There's grease in the bearings and that's going to serve you, you know, pretty well for a couple years. And then, let's see. And it's also going to hopefully loosen up a little bit. But I mean, I'm, you know, I'm not putting, before it would barely spin. I'm not putting barely any pressure on it now just to get it to spin. And it sounds, you know, a lot better. Now I wouldn't take this bar, you know, I wouldn't suggest using this bar for the Olympics. But if you've got a bar that's making, you know, a bad noise, it's not spinning, it's starting to seize up. You can do this job pretty quickly. If you've done it once, I mean, I, you know, I was sitting here talking and everything. But all told, I, I haven't even spent even making the video and everything probably an hour if, if you get good at this, you can knock that pin out, pull that cap off, you know, wipe the bar down, give it a quick dusting with the grinder. Like I said, clean out the inside of the thing with some, you know, solvent, put some grease in there. No kidding. You can have, you know, a side of this bar done in under, you know, in around five minutes, if you're good, an entire bar done in 10 to 15 minutes. Now that, that seems worth it to me, given what, given what they cost and that you just don't have to, you know, go get another one. And we've put these bars back together and put them back into service and had them last, you know, for a long time. So and generally we only replace them when they're, uh, uh, you know, when the bar, or we only get rid of them when the bar bends. Um, you could probably even figure out how to replace the bearing on this side, because I think you could get that bearing out of there and, you know, replace it and put in a new bearing. Uh, the other side, that would be pretty difficult because it's, I think what they do is they put the bearing in and then if you see on the end here, you saw before, well, you can't really see it now, but you saw before, I think they basically put the bearing in and then weld that cap to keep the bearing in, uh, on top of it. So you, getting that thing out would be a lot more work than it was worth. Um, but anyway, that's how you do it. Hopefully this is helpful and obviously you do the same thing on the other side. So one final thing, uh, getting these pins back in, getting them lined up is always a little challenging. Um, you got to make sure the pin's not poking through the uh, cap there or else it won't even go on the bar. Um, but you can see right now I got it. I drove it in there with a hammer. It's pretty much flush with the, um, you know, the end cap there. What you want to do is use that same bolt to just drive it down, you know, like an eighth an inch or something so that it's in there. I don't lube those up or anything when I put them in there. That's going to make them more likely to come out, um, which you don't really want to do, and they're not that hard to get out, really. Um, we've actually had a pin work itself out and lost a cap to one of these bars, um, which I and then the cap somehow disappeared from the gym. So I don't uh, lube those up to make them easier to get out or anything. They're not particularly hard to drive out, even when they're not lubricated. Um, but if that's something you want to give a try, feel free.